All right, uh, let's look at uh, your Monday markets now, and this may be something on your mind. Petrol is set to rise in just two days on Wednesday, but the extent of the hike is not yet clear. Now, if government does not intervene, predictions suggest that the price hike could be higher than 3 rand 50 per litre. That'll take petrol to above 25 rand per litre, a crippling blow for commuters in South Africa. Now, officials met this past weekend to discuss further interventions after the government introduced a temporary 1 rand 50 per litre relief. That was for the months of April and May, so there are calls for an extension. Government levies, of course, including a general fuel levy and road accident fund, those make up about a third of what we as consumers pay. Now, in the meantime, let's look at what has been driving up the price of fuel in South Africa. Firstly, it's the dollar rand exchange rate, since we buy oil in dollars. And, of course, South Africa commuters are heavily uh, at the mercy of the global price of oil. So that's what we're looking at right now, and we are heavily impacted by this price. Well, today, uh, the price of Brent crude oil, which we import for fuel, topped $120 per barrel for future supplies. That is largely thanks to Russia's invasion of Ukraine and sanctions affecting the flow of Russian oil. To put this into perspective, perspective. Uh, fears, before the fears of a Russian invasion began in February, oil was trading at below $90 per barrel in January. Then it hit a 14-year high, close to 140. So we were even worse than this in March. Uh, but today's level, after some pullback, uh, is back at a two-month high. Oil was tempered recently by a concern that the Chinese economy will slow down due to the heavy lockdowns there. But the key hub of Shanghai has now allowed manufacturing operations to resume. The surge in oil prices has contributed to a sharp pickup in the pace of inflation around the world. We're seeing that here in South Africa and it's spurring on central banks like our own to raise interest rates to slow the rate of price hikes and of course that also comes with economic pain. All right we'll talk about uh, petrol in a moment. Uh, let's just take a look at uh, the rest of your main financial indicators. Here's how the markets end. Back to these uh, crazy petrol prices. Now, the petrol price is heavily regulated in South Africa. But on Wednesday, the price of diesel is going to be completely deregulated. And there are moves to do the same with petrol. The question is, what difference will it make to you and me and other users? To discuss, we're joined by Tsepa Mangwai, SABC's economics editor, who joins us every Monday. Welcome, as always. Um, Firstly, let, let's look at what's going to happen on Wednesday. If government doesn't intervene, we're looking at three rand fifty, a four rand increase on top of record high fuel prices. Is that potentially devastating to you? It will be. It's going to be a shock to, to, to the system. Any major price hike often uh, it, it result in a lot of uh, pressure on consumers and one cannot comprehend how that is going to be, but it's going to be tough for yeah. uh, business and, 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 and consumers as well. Uh, obviously, uh, we know that petrol price is immediate to work its way into the system. So uh, the, its impact is going to be seen the next day on our economy and uh, even the impact on the, on the inflation is going to be felt. We're already seeing the yeah. lot of price pressures uh, across the board and they are becoming more uh, broad based in our economy uh, but we are seeing the Reserve Bank acting to make sure that they are not quite well anchored uh, but is the reality that we are dealing with uh, currently. 
it, it affects all the trucks uh, carrying our goods. We, we're too reliant on road transport. And then we know um, if, if taxis hike prices, uh, if, if the Ubers, um, the, the taxis, everybody hikes prices, it's very hard for those to come down. Do you think government's really thinking about that as it uh, obviously is still deciding what to do because we haven't heard uh, anything yet? I'm sure a government is alive to the reality on the ground of wh what's happening and uh, they will have to act. Currently, what we know uh, might happen, um, although you never know because there's a lot of uh, lobby, strong lobby group uh, from the fuel retailers, is with regard to, to, to the... To do the, uh, the price cap on the 93 unleaded, that was um, uh, uh, put across as a proposal that m might be introduced uh, on Wednesday if indeed it goes ahead. So as a result, we may uh, see uh, more, if I can call it, deregulation with the price of 93 octane, uh, especially inland, and that will bring some f flexibility. And again, the price but, of but diesel only as well. But that 93, even though only 95 93. is a very popular fuel. No, there, there's not going to be. I mean, remember that um, when diesel was first um, uh, deregulated at the retail level, uh, the move in government was that there's going to be more deregulation in that space. Mm. Uh, obviously, a lot has happened. There hasn't been much movement in that direction. One of the hurdles was the pipeline between uh, Houting and Durban, that after that pipeline we could see more deregulation of, 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 of the of fuel. But uh, clearly that hasn't happened. And as a result, uh, when governments start to advance those moves, the fuel retailers are saying this is going to put lots of pressure on us because they've enjoyed that protection. Obviously, protection, uh, it covers up for some inefficiencies. But also remember, some Fuel, new entrants in the in the retail space, fuel retail space, uh, they've come. Some of them are highly geared, uh, and as a result, their estimates estimations were based on the current margin that retailers can get. Yeah. So, if this move goes ahead, we could see some fuel retailers uh, closing shop. So. So let's just be clear that the regulation right now uh, sets a price. So you're saying the fuel retailers tailors like it because that pushes up the price to some extent. If there's a lot of competition, they may be forced to bring down their, their prices, which would be good for us. Although they say that the margins are so small. So, so what real difference could deregulation make? Well, the issue of the price cap that government is coming up. So if they're introducing a price cap, say, for example, on 93, the price cap uh, means that they are, it can only play around the very limited margin. Remember, so they, they can go down but not up. Yeah. And Re they don't like that. No, absolutely. And remember, they're competing with the wholesalers, for example, yeah. who are buying their fuel directly from manufacturer at a discounted price and they have to compete in the same space uh, but the reality is they're already competing or they like it or not they are already competing with wholesalers because you and I can go to any wholesaler and fill up our diesel yeah. Um, we can easily do that. But we could also start seeing more competition among uh, a few retailers, different names. We could even start seeing adverts uh, of certain uh, prices. I'm talking uh, 93 octane and, and diesel, obviously. Now the diesel is going to be completely uh, deregulated at both wholesale and retail. So, so that is what's happening on Wednesday. We've got a definite move on diesel. Uh, but did, did I hear you correctly? We're, we're waiting to see what will happen around 93 unleaded? I'm sure the fuel retailers are putting a lot of pressure on government because they don't like this move. Anything is possible. Uh, but this is the announcement that government has made. But whether it will be part of the announcement tomorrow, uh, you know, one never know. But, yeah. uh, you know, that's what we were told would happen. What about the argument that this could be good for urban consumers and and I've seen it in the US you see those adverts and you can mm -hmm. compare petrol stations and get cheaper prices uh, but apparently that's very difficult for for the smaller rural areas they are not going to benefit 
Um, obviously, we know that um, the volumes are not that high, especially in, in rural areas. Uh, we're not seeing much choice because there aren't many uh, retailers to where to buy. Um, in fact, someone was actually arguing that since uh, diesel had been, has been uh, deregulated, uh, farmers have not really seen much movement in terms of the price uh, of, of diesel going down. So why do you want to open up the market if there hasn't been much uh, benefits accrued to, to the farmers but the other reality is they are able to shop around if they can uh, to compare prices from different retailers but also even wholesalers uh, mm. and get the best price and, and let's be clear I mean some of the diesel users are are very big users they don't just fill up the the tanks in their car so, so they will really look for a, a good price obviously they are already uh, Francis looking for a better price since uh, at the, uh, uh, the, the, the 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 retail level uh, you are able to shop around but the question could be if you don't have much choice in terms of uh, the, the the suppliers of diesel uh, you only have one supply in your vicinity yeah. then it becomes a huge challenge you have to take that price that's available within your vicinity uh, because that's the only place where you could go. All right, so, so a concern for different areas. We know on Wednesday diesel completely deregulated, uh, expecting 93 as well, uh, but governments yet to actually decide if it will intervene or not uh, in petrol price hikes uh, at the moment after announcing that relief earlier if that would end uh, now in May. All right, that was Sepa Mangwai, economics editor at the SABC. Let's take a look at